And welcome back to another episode of the Modern Industrialization Guide, where we're starting in the electric age, and we'll be we'll be getting you to the point where you've got yourself an electric blast furnace. Um, so if you've been following along with the guide, uh, at the end of the previous one, we'd gotten to the point where we were making these rubber sheets, and you now, spoiler alert, um, could craft analog circuits. Pretty fiddly at this stage. Eventually, we're going to cover assemblers today. Uh, pretty fiddly at this stage, but um, you've got these. These do unlock a bunch of different recipes. You might be excited by the steel drill. We'll cover that too. That's going to get you a bunch of other resources. Uh, but something that might be handy to start off with, um, depending on your situation and how many machines you've got running all the time, like perhaps you've got a steam quarry constantly running, generating your resources, um, it might be time to replace the steel boiler with a large steam boiler. So you're going to need some heat proof machine casings, which are a bunch of Invar, um, which you can craft in a mixer with a bit of nickel and iron dust. I don't know if I'd recommend making a production line for this sort of stuff just yet. Uh, eventually you will, uh, but you can probably just craft the initial couple by hand. Um, and this is a pretty simple multi-block. Remember, you can use your wrench there and you've got these blondes Blondes, bronze plated bricks um, with a couple of these bronze pipe machine casings. Again, a little bit fiddly, but we'll be getting to assemblers at some point. Uh, and this kind of just goes all around this. Uh, you won't need exactly however many I've used here because you also need the input and output hatches. Um, you're going to want to be able to put in your fuel that you're going to burn. You're going to need to put in the water that's probably coming from a pump um, I don't need multiple pumps I guess we'll find out shortly uh, and then you want your fluid output hatch which is going to be where your steam comes out which I don't know to me it makes sense for it to come out the back but it, it really doesn't matter just anywhere on the bottom and I believe you can even put it there if you wanted if you wanted to completely hide it um, but I like being able to you know see if there's actually steam in something so I guess we'll grab a little bit of coal, chuck it in the input hatch. Uh, we're also going to need some fluid, which we will just connect there. Uh, temperature is very warm, fuel is burning, steam, steam is coming out. Um, I was using this colored, so at this point we can get rid of that steam boiler. Um, we're going to want to hook all of these cables back up though. Um, yeah, so messy, so messy. And uh, at some point you, you hook that into your steam there work. Maybe a bit tidier than we got there. And we can use that buffer we were using before to do the input output thing. Um, I've made a horrible mess here. Uh, you'll want some sort of chest pumping fuel in um because you're gonna burn through this uh, reasonably fast now i think i don't know if this thing uses more fuel than what it needs it doesn't seem to be churned through this pretty quick so i don't think it uses more than uh what your system's using um we could probably test that out if i figured out where all of my steam pipes are actually going and I think no, none of this is connected anymore. Definitely not, because <laughs> the steam is going down. So that's why this thing's not burning up uh, any more any more fuel. Because I need to connect this to there. And then we'll probably see this start to eventually chew through some stuff. If I had set this to extract. That's, yep, don't forget that. That's going to be pretty handy. And there we go, now we can see it. <laughs> Chewing through our fuel. Slightly faster. I think we've just caught up by burning most of that, and there might just be a tiny bit left um, before it starts processing the next one. But uh, yeah, it looks pretty cool, and a good way to get a whole bunch of steam. Okay, so you got your big steam boiler running now, chewing through all of your fuel, and you might be struggling to <laughs> keep it fueled up. Although, if you've automated your, your quarry, 
you'll have coal coming in. Um, so that shouldn't be too much of a, a big deal. Uh, although you're going to need a whole bunch of <laughs> bronze drills, which you probably don't have automated yet. Um, so this next one, you, it's up to you whether or not you make this now. And it's going to be the large tank. Now it's a multi-block, it's, it's not this small. Uh, so yeah, this preview here of the large tank is kind of the smallest version and you can make them much, much bigger than this. Um, so you're going to need some of these steel casings and a bit of glass. Obviously it won't be uh, this easy for you if you're doing it in survival. Um, and so you've got your basic sized one, which is pretty small like that and this holds 1700 buckets I, I believe that's 1700 buckets let's just uh, double check that uh, maybe if we grab ourselves a bucket of water and no you can't just pipe that in okay that's cool now oh, we're gonna have to pipe it in I guess we could store some of this steam since we were just talking about it now unfortunately I don't think that your input hatches can go in this thing. Um, so you can't do this. Um, so this is going to be something like that. Um, you actually have to pipe everything in and out of the front of it. And you can see we're slowly filling up with steam. So you'll need a different colored pipe. I mean, you can do the, the whole input output thing. Um, so you'll still end up with steam in here and it'll output it when it needs to. Um, I really wish you could use input hatches on these, um, but I'm pretty sure you can't. Uh, and then, yeah, despite this being like decent, like that's that's a fair bit of steam that'll last you a little while. Uh, you can make these much bigger. You just kind of have to guess the pattern yourself. So we had three. Let's say we went. Uh, let's go somewhere a little bit further away. If you do a five by five. Um, and I think these have to be square. Uh, and then five by five up there as well. Yeah, if you've got connected textures, this will look uh, slightly better than it does right now. Um, we do something like that. Uh, we chuck in our large tank. Now the preview kind of still looks like it's not going to work. And I'm pretty sure this does. So we finish filling the sun. And come along here. And you'll see this is now holding 8,000 buckets. So, yeah. A bit bigger than this thing. <laughs> um, and th there is certainly a limit with how large you can go. Um, yeah, so this monstrosity uh, does not work because it's too big. <laughs> uh, but you can make them pretty big, just not, not, not this big. So the largest tank you can make is seven by seven in total. So this one is too big. You'll see, yep, doesn't work. Um, yeah, I've, I've put the blocks everywhere they need to go. Um, and then this one, you come over to it, and it can hold almost 22,000 buckets of the fluid. So yeah, you can't go quite as crazy as this one, as cool as that would be. Um, although, you really need to store more than 22,000 of some sort of fluid. Yeah, maybe. Maybe you do. Maybe you do. And it is going to look cool. So I might even just connect that up uh, and let that do the input output. Um, once I connect there. And oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Steam is stored at the top. So yeah, maybe you want to store a bunch of steam and a bunch of water so you've kind of got a bit of a backstuff in case you run out of, you know, your, your fuel in your boiler. Um, could be handy, could be handy. Now, if you've got like applied energistics or refined storage and it can store fluids, you can essentially get ridiculous amounts of uh, kind of power storage in your applied energistics system if that's something you want to do. If you're playing straight modern industrialization, Maybe you want a giant tank. It does look cool. It does look cool. I don't even want the small one. We're going straight for the big one. Straight for the big one. That's some nice, some nice piping. Some nice piping. 
Now, I say you might not want to get into the large tank just yet. Um, most of it is pretty straightforward. Um, just, you know, these, these fiddly recipes you'll be well used to by now. Uh, but the pumps need these motors, which we haven't covered quite yet, um, but we're going to be getting into these. There's nothing too major here. We've got a couple of wires. Um, you can, for the moment, and this is kind of how you have to start, um, you craft your magnetic steel rods. Um, like this. Eventually you can do it with a machine that doesn't require the redstone, but we're we're not quite at the uh, electric part yet. Um, so yeah, that might be a reason you don't want to make a tank just yet, although it's only the tank thing itself that requires these. Um, up to you, up to you. Handy once we get into like oil processing, which we're not going to cover uh, in this video, but uh, in the future, definitely, definitely. So at this point, maybe you have a giant tank of steam, maybe you've decided to hold off. Uh, next thing we probably want to make is the battery alloy dust. This is pretty straightforward to make, lead dust and antimony dust. Um, you don't get these from your quarry yet. Um, if you make steel drills, you can. Um, but I don't know if you're going to need an awful lot just right at this very moment, so maybe you just manually uh, you know, mine and, and craft that into dust, or process it into dust, um, and then you're going to be Smelting that, you can just smelt that in a regular furnace to get battery alloy ingots, which can be crafted into all of these plates. Um, cables using those rubber sheets. So, yep, you definitely need the rubber automated. Um, and you're going to be using this to make these redstone batteries, which are used to make storage for power and these basic machine hulls. These are what we're going to be using for all the LV or low voltage uh, machines. So, you're going to want battery alloy. Now, once you uh, are producing that, and I don't think we need to go through how you uh, mix stuff in a mixer, um, LV steam turbines. These are your first bits of power production. Most of the stuff you'll be familiar with, the analog circuits you're going to be making a lot of. Uh, these are just bits and pieces. Uh, motors might be the first time you're crafting them. So most of this is pretty straightforward. You're going to need your rubber and your wires, uh, but you're going to need a magnetic steel rod, which again, you can craft manually and you have to craft manually at this point. Um, but eventually we can automate it so you don't need the redstone. Uh, yeah, not too major. Now these things are reasonably straightforward. Um, you can get yourself the LV steam turbine. Um, going by its name, you can probably tell that it's, it's going to require some steam. But essentially, steam go in power come out. So I'll just very neatly uh, run this. Again we can have multiple pipes and cables and stuff in the same block space. And this will now be fired up starting to produce EU. Um, this is LV. Now there's no like exploding machines or anything you don't have to worry about putting the wrong voltage into the wrong machine but uh, certain, certain things only take certain voltages. Uh, so yeah, I mean at this point you you now have power, which is really cool, which is really cool. Still steam based, still steam based. Uh, I'm, actually I'm pretty sure every bit of power you ever make is steam based, so yeah. Now when it comes to LV power you've got um, some different bits and pieces you can make. Uh, transformers you probably don't need at this point. You can make them, but you're not going to have any machines that take MV. You've got your storage units, which require a bit more of that battery alloy stuff. Um, again, once you've once you've made the turbine, you've made all of these components. It's just more crafting of them, um, and these are reasonably straightforward as well. Um, you're going to need some cables. Now there are a few different cables that work with LV. You've got copper cables tin cables and silver cables and you can see like hovering over here you can see that these are all LV whereas these other cables up here are HV and you probably can't even craft these I think cooper nickel I mean you don't need it now but I think cooper nickel you can probably craft without any fancy machines yeah you can just smelt the cooper nickel dust which is just copper dust and nickel uh, no point making this at this point um, now I don't believe that there's any reason other than perhaps wanting to separate uh, networks why you would use any cable over the other one. Um, you can have three cables in a block space so yeah, if you want to keep your inputs and outputs separate you could run separate networks for that sort of thing. 
I knew that was going to happen. Uh, but you can essentially just run your power in there. This is not outputting because, because that is an output. Because that is an output. If we switch the output to there, we'll see it starts to take power in. Um, so you can have only one output, but you can have multiple inputs. Yeah, that, that does seem to be the case. Uh, and then, of course, you can run your power out. So maybe you just want to have your copper cable used for the power going in. Um, you can completely separate your other cables for, for power going out. Um, and we'll just, we'll just tidy that up. Yeah. And maybe you just like the way the colors look and you want all three cables coming out of one machine. Maybe. Maybe. But you're probably not even worried about storing power at this point because you have nothing that even uses the power. Still probably handy to make yourself an LV storage unit or two, um, or even multiple steam turbines, uh, depending on how good your steam production is. But again, we don't actually have any, any real reason. Um, it's charging up way faster. Any real reason to be creating a whole bunch of power uh, until we start getting into our LV machines or electric machines in this case. Yeah, so a lot of the machines that you have the steam versions of, so if we come over here, we're talking about things like uh, our macerator, our furnace, mixers, cutting machines, compressors. I think in the majority of them, if not all of them, uh, have electric versions. Um, now you don't upgrade these the same way. Like there's no upgrade template or whatever they're called. Oh, well, there's no electric upgrade like we have steel upgrades to, to turn your bronze machines into steel. You don't turn your steel into electric. Uh, you make entirely new machines. So electric is generally just a lot more efficient. Um, we can start just grabbing a couple of these. I mean, let's grab something like the, the macerator. Um, and we'll check that this would be kind of cool to do like a side-by-side a -side comparison um, if we had a steel macerator and an electric macerator. Um, we'll just run the power. I mean, we may as well come out of the battery. Now, I don't actually want to create an infinite loop of power there. No point constantly putting the same power in and out of the same thing. Um, so we've got power in there. He's powered up. We'll just just because we're curious, connect steam into this one and grab, I mean, hey, we've got ores coming out of this machine, although I'm in creative mode, so it makes it a little bit annoying to get stuff out. Right, we can compare these two. So we can see this, this one's pretty fast, and we have uh, this efficiency or overclocking thing, which is very cool, which is very cool. So not only is it faster by default, um, as we continue to process stuff, you'll see that this overclocking thing builds up. So you're kind of incentivized to bulk process or process a bunch of stuff all at once because um, as the efficiency gets closer and closer to 64, uh, the machine starts going faster and faster. Um, so I guess now is probably a good time to talk about like having separate production lines uh, for different things. So if you have an electric macerator and you just have one and you're putting all of your ores through it to process them, um, each time the type of ore changes, you're going to lose the sufficiency bonus. It doesn't carry over. Um, so if we grab like coal ore, and it doesn't mean we're not going to see the machine go as fast as it possibly can. Um, but if we chuck coal ore in there, the efficiency goes all the way down, and then it starts process processing again. Um, admittedly, this is still, you know, very fast, faster than uh, than this one. Uh, but if you have an electric macerator per like material coming out of your quarry. Um, 
it's going to be a lot faster at processing those materials. Now, admittedly, this probably isn't fast enough to overload one of the macerators, so you probably could get away with just having one. Um, but something to think about if you've got multiple um, stem quarries, which I don't even know if it's really worth it. Uh, but as we continue on through some of the uh, more advanced things uh, in the mod, you're going to have pretty fast quarries that will certainly overload a macerator, and you're going to want... And it's got full, so it's stopped as well. Um, you're going to want to be able to, to get that full amount of overclocking, which can be increased in the future. Right, Avengers Assemble indeed. Let's talk about the assembler. Um, bit of a pain to craft at the moment, um, with like the robot arms, which have all of these components. Uh, you're going to want a lot of assemblers, these things have many, many recipes. I mean, a lot of these you're not really going to use. I don't think you really need to be automating, you know, steam quarries themselves. It's unlikely that you're going to have that many of them. Um, but you're probably going to want uh, assemblers. So what could be useful at this point is setting up the assemblers um, to be able to craft more assemblers. So have an assembler responsible for creating robot arms. Um, and this is where you're going to end up with massive, massive production lines of stuff. Because um, if you're going to have an assembler that is producing robot arms, it also needs to be constantly being filled with like tin cables, rods, motors, pistons, and circuits. Uh, circuits can also be crafted. Uh, in an assembler, so you can have an assembler that just makes analog circuits. You don't have to do this, but honestly, if you're if you're going for like end game uh, modern industrialization, this is probably the best way to go. Uh, you can craft stuff with applied energistics, like you can set up recipes and craft circuits on demand. Now, that's what I did the first time I kind of played through the mod. Would not recommend it. I mean, the the recipe is probably faster using applied energistics um, at this point. Um, but if you're talking about things like resistors, this gets you three and requires all this stuff. You don't even need paper and you get 12 for this. Um, so often the recipes will be much cheaper with an assembler. And it really makes automating stuff um, much, much better for the mod, I think. I think I think probably what's intended is you have these big production lines. Um, so you'll have an assembler that just makes robot arms, which is going to be fed by an assembler that makes analog circuits, which might be fed by an assembler that makes uh, resistors, um, which might be fed by a wire mill that just turns copper wires into copper fine wires, and so on and so forth. Yeah, so you'll end up with potentially some sort of line coming off your copper ore, um, smelting that and then that gets split off into the different types of copper things you need like your ingots and your plates and your rods whatever bits and pieces you need for, for all your different recipes and i honestly think that's the best way to go um, is having that sort of thing set up um, and the advantage of course of automating all of the recipes that make all of this is now you've just you know gone a long way towards automating say steel drills which actually if you automate things uh you're automating the motors yeah i think you've probably automated most of the stuff required for steel drills um you're going to want to automate steel drills uh whenever you get to that point so this is one of the biggest differences i think between playing a lot of other minecraft mods um is this idea of having big production lines you can auto craft with applied energistics and have and have all your recipes set up and the automation set up that way where you're just crafting stuff on demand or maybe even keeping stuff in stock but i tried that once would not recommend production lines is the way to go and it looks kind of cool so i won't go into like swapping over all of your machines like you can of course turn your compressor into an electric compressor but they kind of just operate exactly the same they just run on power instead of steam um Instead of your cutting machine, you can have your electric cutting machine. Yeah, we, we don't need to cover uh, all of those small uh, different types of machines. Future 
classic duff here after doing a bit of editing and realized I probably should go over slot locking with the assemblers as that's a reasonably kind of almost critical part of using these things. Um, so I'll do a quick example of why this is something you'd, you know, want to be want to be doing. So we'll check some power in here. We'll say we have this chest. And let's say we're wanting to craft inductors. Um, now there's a couple of ways you can do this. Um, and I'm just chucking in some other bits and pieces here that are also used in an assembler to make other things. So it's also the ingredients for making the capacitors. But let's say, in this instance, you're really just wanting to make inductors. Um, unless you set up um, your filters uh, to be pretty explicit about what gets extracted, which you can do, it is one way of doing it. Um, when we do this, um, we'll eventually start seeing the bits and pieces come in. It's a little bit slow. Um, so let's say we're wanting to craft inductors. Um, now this might might work fine. We'll see we've got inductors coming in um, as the materials continue to flow in and then eventually we'll just skip forward to the part where these are in here. Um, and let's say for some reason you ran out of steel rods uh, because the production was a little bit slow because the chest got empty. Now all of a sudden you're making capacitors and even once you put these steel rods back in here, um, I suspect we're probably going to keep making capacitors. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think that's making some more capacitors because it only uses two. Yeah, so that can be annoying. Um, you can kind of get around this problem by using slot locking. So probably the easiest way to do this is just oh, not be in creative mode because then <laughs> that happens. Um, You'll see now that these slots have this orange thing around them, which means only these items can go in there. Um, unfortunately, these still all allow anything. So if you hold shift, you can scroll these down to nothing, um, and that won't allow any other items to come in here. So even if we have gold plates in here, and even though the filters would let them come through, they don't go in here because there's no room for them. Um, and then we can also set those to zero and this is kind of locked to only producing inductors so if we had all the materials for making um, capacitors uh, which we don't now we do it still doesn't happen because there's no output slot for it um, and so we just end up making the thing we wanted which was inductors and yet yeah, utilizing this whole capacity thing is a great way to keep maybe certain amounts of things in stock, like these are pretty cheap, but let's say you're making something much more expensive, um, you might want to restrict the number that you have in here and use it as kind of a buffer. Is a good way to go about things. But yeah, thought I should go over slot locking because uh, it's a very handy thing, very handy thing. But now that you do have assemblers and you're looking at crafting different bits and pieces, um, you'll start seeing this soldering alloy showing off um, in a bunch of different recipes. Um, you can make yourself some gears uh, a lot less fiddly than having to craft like the steel bolts and having like a cutting machine that's turning that into that. Um, and actually also, uh, you actually get twice as many gears for the amount of steel that's going in, plus you don't need the bolts. Um, you're going to want a soldering alloy. Reasonably straightforward, mixer of tin and lead gives you soldering alloy. Um, and then you can melt that in a steam blast furnace. Just literally soldering alloy going into the steam blast furnace. Um, which probably means, yeah, one of these blast furnaces we made <laughs> a while back that was making steel. Um, depending on how much steel you're using, maybe you convert one into making soldering alloy, or maybe you build yourself another, you know, steam blast furnace that's just making soldering alloy. You're going to want this. You're going to want this. I think the gears is probably, yeah, that's, that's potentially the nicest. And being able to automate your drill heads, automated bronze drill heads, infinite resources. Yeah, you're getting copper and tin from here, which means you can now craft, like that's iron. Um, I guess you're not getting glass to get um, sand, uh, although... 
we did kind of talk about that. You can, of course, use a copper drill to get cobblestone and gravel, which you can crush down into sand and smelt into glass. So you can have a self-sustaining bronze drill quarry set up infinite resources, truly infinite resources at this point. Um, so aside from being able to upgrade all your old steel machines into nice shiny new electric ones, we also get access to the polarizer, which is a brand new one, not particularly complicated. Uh, I don't think you actually need to, I'd never automate a, an unassembler, uh, but the polarizer is used for being able to turn just regular steel rods into magnetic steel rods, uh, which is handy because the only other way to craft these magnetic steel rods is manually I mean, unless you've got some other bot that does auto crafting as well. Um, but you know, you're wasting six redstone per, whereas you can just use some electricity and turn them into these, um, which is going to be needed if you want to fully automate motors. Um, so, you know, before you've got assemblers set up for creating assemblers, um, which maybe we should actually just kind of, oh, it's a lot of setup. <laughs> Just like you'll be doing in survival if you're setting up the production line to make assemblers. There's a lot that goes into that. I don't, it's going to take a long time if I want to set all of that up. <laughs> I mean, that's the mod. That's the mod. There's big production lines crafting stuff. Polarizer, useful if you want to be able to make magnetic steel rods, which you need to make motors. You're going to want automate motors. You're going to need a polarizer. But all right. So you might have some uh, new steel machines. You've got your polarizer, which I actually never plop down anywhere. Uh, let's, let's just quickly. Professional, professional. You've got yourself a polarizer so you can uh, craft that stuff. Like your steel, steel rods. Yeah, perfect. Uh, the next thing you're probably gonna be crafting is the electric blast furnace. Uh, this is kind of a big gate uh, in terms of progressing much further into the mod, uh, so you, you don't have a choice. Now, this is crafted using what looks pretty fancy, magnetic cooper nickel wire. You can use your polarizer for this, and actually you have to use a polarizer for this, you can't craft this manually. Uh, cooper nickel itself is relatively straightforward. Um, cooper nickel dust is made by just mixing copper and nickel. We did actually talk about that earlier. Um, so you can be making a bit of this. Um, you're going to need a bunch of invar, which have we made this before? I can't remember if we've made invar before. Um, but invar is made by mixing iron and nickel. Um, just makes the invar dust. Uh, and that's pretty straightforward in your machine hulls, which you maybe, maybe you've automated that now. Uh, so reasonably straightforward. You also need cooper nickel coils, which are relatively straightforward actually. Um, just cables, so rubber and more cooper nickel. And it's kind of hollow on the inside. Um, now these coils uh, determine the tier of the electric blast furnace because there are other coil types, which you don't really need to worry about now because we're a little bit far away from that. Um, and it's also, you need to use a screwdriver on the thing itself to change the tier. Uh, not something you need to worry about now. The default one is what you want to be using. Uh, so this thing is now active. Uh, but of course it's not going to run. You're going to want to get yourself a LV Energy Input Hatch. Uh, machine hull cable. Pretty straightforward. You don't need to muck around with steam. Well, aside from generating your power, you need to uh, muck around with generating steam. Uh, we chuck some power on this guy. He's now active. We, of course, need the uh, input hatch. Item input, item output. Um, let's go item input and item output. Um, and the, the main thing you're going to want to be crafting with us initially is aluminum or aluminium, depending on where in the world you're from. Uh, so this all comes from bauxite. You, you can craft it uh, using a bunch of bauxite dust, make a block, use that to get one ingot, and that's an option. Um, otherwise, you can craft aluminum dust. Uh, I don't know if you can actually really get that from anywhere at this point, because I don't think, no, we're certainly not that far 
Uh, I don't think you can make an electrolyzer. No, we can't make an electrolyzer yet. So you're going to be, unfortunately, um, crafting it with blocks of bauxite, uh, which is a pretty inefficient. <laughs> it's pretty inefficient doing it this way, but you have to do it initially. So bauxite uh, comes from crushing a bauxite ore. Uh, which you can mine. Now you will eventually be able to get this uh, renewably with steel drills, but that requires the electric quarry, which requires things that require uh, aluminum. So you're going to need to get yourself one of these. You're going to need to mine up a whole bunch of oxide um, so that you can get some of uh, this stuff. Check it in the correct hatch. And this will tick away and slowly start producing uh, aluminum. And the electric blast furnace can overclock as well. So you'll see it's got the efficiency there. So pretty slow at the moment. Uh, but by the time it gets to the end of the stack, it's going to be going uh, much faster than it is. So having a dedicated blast furnace just for making aluminum, not a bad idea. Uh, especially once you get yourself steel drills and you can uh, not have to you know, go down to the mines to get yourself that box out. But hey, I think we will leave that there. It's a pretty good point to, to end off on. Uh, it's probably taken you quite a few hours to get to this point if you're doing it in survival, following along with the guide. Um, but yeah, now that you have aluminum, aluminium, whatever you call it, uh, there's a lot of stuff we can do in the future. So uh, it's been Classic Duff. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Uh, we'll come back next time and uh, carry on uh, going through the gigantic mod that is modern industrialization. See ya.